Welcome to Pod Songs, where we interview inspirational people in service to others as inspiration for a new song. Today's guest is Vandana Shiva, an Indian scholar, environmental activist, food sovereignty advocate, and anti-globalization author and activist. I know you don't like being compared to Gandhi, but um, you are a true disciple of his, no? I am a disciple, for sure. I mean, every time, every door has been closed, it's Gandhi who shows a little window that's still open, a skylight that's open. So, yeah. Or you can open. That's the problem. Okay. Because we have in people like him to inspire us, you know, to raise our own behavior, to show us what we can be. And, and I guess that's the essence of what you're doing is to, is to show us that just one person like you can, can move mountains. Well, you know, he always said, you've got to be the change you want to see. And of course we are interlinked. We are totally connected, but you never begin at the wrong end of the connection, which is not you. Yeah, you don't begin with the corporations and you don't begin with the fake person called the corporation. You know, <laughs> I mean, they created a corporation in order to not have to be accountable. And, um, and gangsters, really, nothing but gangsters got together then to create the corporation, the East India Company. And the gangsters are creating corporations today. And the legal personhood of the corporation is the hiding. So you don't begin by taking this ghost, literally, a ghost person, and say, you change. No, you, you are the person interrelated to a beautiful world, and you have to be the change you want to see. That's beautiful. Actually, that leads perfectly into what I wanted to talk to you about, because I had Joel Bacon on the show, and he, he was the first person to introduce this idea, exactly what you said, that corporations have the same rights as people, but they're basically psychopaths. They have none of the moral, moral morality that we do. And they have none of the responsibilities that real human beings have. Right. So I want to do a whole album of songs for him. And he suggested people like an interview. And he said that you'll be wonderful to speak to. Um, because there's so many issues, evils, air pollution, poverty, suffering. And after these interviews, you're going to make songs. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but let me then complete the idea of basically gangsters hiding behind the fiction of a corporation. And how did they begin? They called it the limited liability corporation. The very word limited liability says no responsibility. They never created a corporation with full liability. Began with limited liability and now the Bill Gates and others are creating what I call zero liability. They call it zero cost accounting zero budget accounting and the trick they are playing on the world now with all of the climate disaster is something called net zero yeah we'll continue polluting 99 percent of the pollution comes from the rich rich countries rich individuals who are still flying in their private jets while everyone else is locked down yeah and they're not going to stop and they're going to have privileged visas for those who are their slaves. So yeah, you can come, you can cross the borders to be our slaves, but those who are truly, truly independent, we're sorry, we're going to block them. And in a way, the lockdown is a good taste of this zero liability concept, but a zero liability concept with all rights to all resources. You know, I've been working on the seed. It used to be Monsanto I used to deal with from the late 80s to literally about a few years ago. And now it's Bill Gates I have to deal with, who controls all the seed of the world. Most people don't realize it through digital technologies because, you know, every time there's an attempt um, to control real resources, real human beings, real societies, corporations cook up a new tool and they pretend it has miracle pass. Yeah. And the corporation must use tools 
for civilizing missions. In those days, it used to be religion and not a true religion. I mean, I, I think Christ would never have accepted what happened with the papal bull. Christ just would not have accepted how nine million people were killed as witches for continuing to believe we are part of nature. You know, most people don't realize the witch hunts were about being part of nature. And the papal bull for that was they're too close to nature. They must be separated. And then you get the Descartes and you get the Bacons and you get all of this separation thesis. And if you believed in oneness as part of the earth, you believed in being earth citizens, you believed in having a body that can feel pain, you were then a witch. And today we have new kinds of witch hunts, you know, fascinating witch hunts. But what is common from the beginning of the corporation to today is you create a civilizing mission, you create tools of conquest for su pretending superiority. We are superior to you because we have digital. And therefore, we can take over. We're superior to you because we have oil. And you don't. You don't mess up the climate. We have oil. And we will create climate change and mess your lives up and melt your glaciers in the Himalaya and create cyclones in the Bay of Bengal. But we will not pay. And instead of polluter pays principle, we will make you pay. We'll continue to pollute. And now we will create global accounting systems around this net zero fudge, which will take your land, take your forest, take your trees, take your soil. This too is being done through digital. They want one, Gates wants one global accounting system and wants to be the one global certifier of what's allowed in the world or not, what's not allowed in the world. So we are, you know, as it is, corporations began as an anti-life, anti-women, anti-nature enterprise, anti-third world, you know, they colonized us. They were created to colonize us. And that work of being totally anti-life, anti-women, anti-health, anti-freedom continues. I mean, that is same, except that the tools are more destructive. Well, I was hoping it was going to be a comedy song or a bit lighthearted, but um, I don't think there's any chance of that. We've, we've gone heavy, but uh, that's fine. We, we have the lighthearted bit all. We have the lighthearted bit always, you know. For me, fake food is the lighthearted bit. I mean, you messed up 75% people's gut microbiome with processed food. And now you want to say, oh, eat more lab food, eat more GMOs, eat more fake food. And I will pretend fake food that destroys your gut is saving the planet. To me, that's a joke. Yeah. A zero budget account. You have to, you, A, you have to laugh. And B, you have to say, you will not force me. You know, that is my learning from Gandhi. And if I have learned from Gandhi, one thing, it is no matter how powerful. The corporations are. The power you have is to say no. But you can only say no if you are not attached to what they force you to have. Yeah. So detachment then becomes your power because there's nothing they can give you. You have your own life. You have your own autonomy. You have your own mind. You have your own relationships. And if you refuse their rule, refuse corporate rule, which Gandhi did with the salt, we did it with the seed. We said Gandhi could say no to the salt monopoly of the British by walking to the beach and saying, nature gives it free. We need it for our survival. We will make salt. We will not obey your laws. So when the Monsantos came up with patenting life, I said, no, nature gives these seeds to us. Our ancestors have bred them. We need to pass them on to future generations. That's our duty. And we will not obey your laws, no matter what law you bring. We will continue to save our seeds. So Gandhi called it the salt satyagraha. That's the force of truth. We call it the seed satyagraha. But I've had to do food satyagraha. You know, they tried to shut down Gandhi's cold press oil mill. Can you imagine the, the industrial oil system based on GMO soya, which is destroying the Amazon? They wanted us to eat GMO soya and say, ban, ban your food, ban your oil. Five million close press, cold press mills were shut. They also tried to shut Gandhi's mouth. So we did a civil disobedience. And I'm now preparing. I hope more people will wake up and I hope your podcast will happen. We have to do a Satyagraha for life. You know, 
food is life. Good food heals us. All chronic diseases are recognized to be coming from a food that is disrespecting nature and our health and integrity. Even the new epidemics, the Ebolas, the HIVs, the Zikas, the Chikungunyas, they're all coming because of invasion into forests by agribusiness. If you look at where is the invasion happening today, Amazon, GMO soya, Indonesia, Congo, palm oil, all for a fake food system, raw material for fake food. So if we are concerned about COVID, then you'd better be concerned about the fake food. If you're concerned about your health, reducing your immunity in the COVID disaster, you'd better be concerned with food freedom. That's our work. See, I think it's time to recognize that corporations are so greedy and so hungry for profits. They want our food back. They want our seed and they want our food. This is what they want. And they want our land. They want our land, they want our seed, they want our food. And they want our minds. So how do you defend all this? You defend your mind by continuing to think as a free individual. You can defend your land by saying, no way, your digital programs will not steal my land. Just been working with farmers who wanted to understand what a Microsoft entry in taking control of our land records means. I was explained to them. It basically means the new British landlordism, where with one stroke of a pen, they took our land and killed our people. 40 million died for rent extraction. Except that then it needed a pen, and now it needs a kick. And that's the big difference for today. But we've done the seeds at their grade, and we have defended seeds, we've defended laws, and this movement is spreading. It's so beautiful. And during COVID, even though the propaganda kept saying there's no connection between your native immunity and, and your resilience to the disease, everyone is realizing, you know, the levels of awareness in India, everyone, you know, we work with women farmers and, and they're growing gardens everywhere because they don't understand it. You know, go to a village and say, I made my kara, I had my tulsi, I had my haldi. And they know it. I mean, after 10,000 years of knowledge can't be whipped away just because a gate said, I have digital, I control your mind. This is the freedom of our times. This is the freedom of our times. Because all the corporations that are controlling the world today are technology corporations. So what is the technology corporation's capital? The data they steal from you. That's why they call it data mining, right? They steal your data. So you've got to be very cautious about not letting your data be stolen. You've got to be very cautious that their wealth is based on theft, like the British wealth was based on theft. It's not out of the blue that you have big data is the new oil. Yeah. So it's interesting times. And um, I think more and more people are becoming aware of how, how rotten the corporate construct was and how they want to seek freedom in a not corporate dominated life. And people are making the shift. This awareness is coming anyway. There's some stupid people. And sadly, you know what, what is interesting for me, for our times, is the so-called more educated people are more willing to slip into propaganda. Oh, the corporations are good for us. Oh, surely they bring us new technology. And don't we need those new technology? Well, just like there was a time when they said, oh, don't we need the papal bull? And don't we need your individual, your religion to be destroyed for an invading religion, which was not Christianity? This is not business. Every one of our spiritual teachers rose against the British rule as corporate rule. Yeah? Most people don't realize the resurgence of Indian spirituality in contemporary times was a material resistance to corporate aid. The Sri Aurobindo, Gandhi, Tagore, Swami Vivekananda, read any of them. They're speaking against the corporations and the rule of greed. So it is, it is also a spiritual struggle. Wow, yeah. that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> because do you, do you see the rise of these, these digital barons, shall we say, as are they more of a threat than corporations? Well, they are corporations. And as I said earlier, the digital barons are corporations with surveillance in their hands to control. So they are mm. corporations. You know, a digital baron is not a non-corporation. A digital baron is a corporation, but a corporation with new tools of surveillance, of control, of mining your data, 
working with governments to totally take away your freedom. And that's why they're more dangerous, you know. A Monsanto sold toxic GMO seeds. That's all it sold. Yeah? These guys are yeah. selling the toxic GMO seeds because that's what Gates is doing. They are, I said that in many ways, they are the new Monsantos. But they are basically trying to toxify our minds and our thinking. Never before has all of humanity had an invasion into your, their mind on the scale that we are having. Most people think a tool is a tool and it's outside there. But these tools are invasions into this part. Mm, so it's more insidious, yeah. More, much more violent. Much more violent. Mm. You, you, you wanted to call it oneness against the 0.001%. Because um, it's actually, yeah. I was speaking to Sandra and Navidi, it's actually, there's about 10,000 people who control yeah. the fate of the world. You know, just that it was a very ugly cover uh, with so many zeros before it. And also anyway, the Occupy Wall Street movement had named the 1% and 99%. So I said, let's just carry that as a metaphor, not as a realistic definition of how many there are, but as a metaphor of polarization, which is getting worse, you know, it's getting worse because what is the lockdown doing? Taking away people's livelihoods. Yeah. I've just come to sort things out in Delhi and it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm just getting more and more stories about them. You know, the pumps were stolen, the pipes were stolen. I mean, if you rob everyone of their food, they have to do something to eat, right? So you're going to create you are going to create criminal societies. And it is these corporations that are responsible for the rise of crime. They are responsible for the femicide. They are responsible for the genocide and the ecocide. That is the crime they're committing. They're committing ecocide, crimes against nature. Genocide, crimes against humanity. Femicide, because the women are the worst victims now as they were during the witch hunts. That's the violence. And because women are the one defenders of life, you know, women have been. So when the land is being taken, it's the woman who's there. Yeah. When a uh, seed is grab being grabbed, it's the woman who's there. When the toxic you spread, it's the women of Bhopal who are still fighting Union Carbide, who became Dao, which became Dao Dupont, which is now Corteva. And they keep changing their names. But the inside evil is not just the same, it's amplified. So when I was researching you, I was watching you on YouTube and you, you mentioned Bill Gates in the yeah. title. Because it's very hot in Delhi and my Mac is saying the MacBook is getting very hot hmm. and, um, and it will shut down Chrome. So do your questions fast now. Okay, right. Have you ever been in the same room as Bill Gates? Yes, of course. Not once, time. but I remember a particular time. The World Economic Forum, you might remember, after the 1999 shutting down of WTO, then the World Economic Forum, you know, started to woo people like us and call us to meetings. And till two years later, inside I was giving speeches with the DuPonts of the World Bank. And then I washed out for solidarity to the protesters. And the police tried to beat me up. And so I came back and held a press conference. I said, I'm the same human being outside. I'm giving solidarity and I'm criminal inside. You applaud me. No, this won't work. You've got to apologize to the protesters and to me. And I won't come back till I get an apology. So I never went back. But during that period, they were calling me to these World Economic Forums. And the one in Melbourne was very, very, very big. And, uh, and the protesters had just blocked the hotel. So I was marching with them. And I said, you know, it's so and so time. I have a debate with Bill Gates. And if you give me permission, I'll go. If you don't want me to go, I won't go. They said, of course you must go. And they let me through. Bill Gates couldn't come. He had to come by a helicopter to the hotel. And then he was saying, oh, the most, and I'm talking about 15 years ago. He said, oh, the most serious thing is people don't have computers. I said, no, the most serious thing is people don't have food. The most serious thing is people don't have water. You know, that's the divide we have to be addressing. So when he's been out and he, he became a millionaire with Microsoft, Billionaire, billionaire. And now he'd like to be a trillionaire with taking control of our seed and food. Of course, I've been in the same room with him. Oh, and more than that, I've been in the same room or during the, the Paris summit where this man is standing with heads of state. I said, what happened? I know the UN enough. It's supposed to be heads of state. One country, one vote. Since when did the billionaire take over a UN body? And that's when I wrote Oneness versus One Percent with my son to solve that puzzle. Or when did billionaires take over government and the United Nations? 
that my book, Oneness versus One One Percent, is trying to solve that puzzle. Yeah, I've been seeing all these farmers' protests. Um, we saw them all last year, but um, in September 2020, uh, Modi introduced these three bills to give farmers the freedom to sell their produce anywhere in the country and enter into contracts with unlicensed buyers at a pre-agreed price. But um, I've, I found out the farmers, they're still camping there in Delhi. Yeah, so globalization came to India in 91, became formal through the World Trade Organization. The laws passed now were written by the World Bank in 91. We've been fighting them since then, and we've created huge movements, 500,000 in Bangalore, 200,000 in Delhi, and the movements against neoliberal globalization have been going on since against the corporations. You know, we are the first country that threw out the East India Company. We defeated the first corporation that was ever created, and it was a farmer's movement. So we, the current movements are very important because they are carrying the soul of India. The soul of India is the farmers. So it's really greed of corporations and the soul of every person, every being, and soul of India. Do you think Monsanto and these corporations, they're like a, do you think they're like a locust plague? Like, you know, they come in, there's a good harvest, the soil's good, they destroy everything, and then in a very short time. But a locust just destroys. These guys steal. They destroy and steal. Right? So if, okay, if they destroy it, we, we jump right back because we work with the resilience of nature. Mm -hmm. The earth hasn't gone. The plants haven't gone. A locust attack can be su survived. These guys are destroying the planet yeah. and the future, and they're doing it no. very intentionally. Every place where life is destroyed. Most people don't realize the Googles, you know, we are on Google. Yeah? We are on Chrome. Yeah? And they must be spying on us. Okay, spy, listen to what I have to say. Five years ago, Google started a life mm -hmm. science division. Yeah. And the moral is we have to defeat Mother Nature. This was what the corporate world wrote then. And those who, what you call the digital barons are still struggling to defeat Mother Nature, not getting it, that she is undefeatable. You can rupture her systems, you can create storms, but she's the one who has the last word. Mm. Yeah, you said the corporations and the capitalism doesn't produce anything. It, it has this illusion of growth. No. Yeah. Illusion of creation and production. And out of that, the illusion. Of, and therefore, they have to deny and wipe out the real creativity and production of nature, of women, of farmers. Why are they threatened by small farmers? Because if the farmer's production is accepted, how will take the digitalization picture? You know? Mm -hmm. So they have to make it look like this is primitive and this is modern. Right? No, this is theft and that's freedom. But, you know, if, if we're also the customers, I mean, they, they rely on us, our profits to spend, they're relying on it, us using them. So if none of us have any livelihoods, oh, aren't we all going to die out? Well, they don't realize because they have so convinced themselves. They, they are the gods. They are the creators. They're the masters of the universe. They take that illusion into themselves. And they have no idea that everything that is supporting the world that they are profiting from, if they destroy it, there will be no profits. You know, that they have so enthralled themselves with their own illusion that there will be nothing. There will be no digital world. There will be no digital barons. There will be no billionaires on a dead planet. Nothing. Yeah. I, I, I remember you wrote in the oneness versus the 1%, one you said the we are living in times when the 1% has the power to destroy our planet and common lives with no responsibility and accountability for their actions because they have clever ways to create their illusions. And, and we all buy into this illusion. Um, so that's what our challenge is, to not get trapped by the illusions. That's us. That, that's freedom today. Hmm. The freedom today is not get trapped by the illusions. Be free. Free being, you know, what are the spiritual traditions? What does Buddha, what does the Lai Lama talk about? What did the Buddha, don't allow your mind to be polluted. What is pollution? Letting someone else's illusions shape your thinking. That's pollution. It's pollution of the mind. And it is more toxic mm. than the poisons mm. that are being spread by the Monsanto's. Mm. So Jack, we should be wrapping up. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. And, um, I just wanted to ask you one closing question. Um, 
because you know you live your For life sure. you live your life in service so much i mean if bill gates calls up tomorrow and says you know i've read your book i've i realize i've been an idiot um i'm just going to i'm going to do exactly what you say what what would you do what 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 dreams would you have you going to live in the himalayas would you sail around the world what would you do if it was all over tomorrow well, I, well the first thing i'd say is apologize apologize to the earth apologize to the farmers apologize to those you have harmed the second thing i'd say is Give back our seeds. Give back our food. It doesn't belong to you. Hands off. Just hands off. And third is, with humanity, come and learn. I'm very willing to have you as a student at the Earth University. We started. More than happy to teach you how living beings live. Thanks, Pandana. Bye. Bye-bye. creation you know it's just blatant theft and the system will not stop until there's nothing left wake up people come on now don't get mesmerized by these digital barons and their hypnotic lies their aim is not discreet they want to defeat mother nature their illusion yeah it's so senseless dangerously anti-life anti-health anti-woman no accountability their media floods our minds PR pollution money is the goal but you know it's nature's execution their aim is not discreet they want to defeat mother nature Jenkins for those amazing vocals. If you want to hear the song again, it's available on all music streaming services or for a $1 download from podsongs.com. You can also subscribe there for our newsletter, for all other news and updates. A big thanks to our musical production team here in Italy, Maurizio Sanicola, Massimino Vozza and Luigi Falcione, and my researcher, Dori Verbo. Please help us by sending this episode to your friends, sharing it on social media, and reviewing it wherever you can. I also have another show to listen to. It's called The Mystic Cast, and it's about spirituality, UFOs, mysticism, the occult, and the Ethereum Society, the teachings of which led me to start this project, serving the service, helping those who help others. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great day.